Well, welcome, really nice to see everyone. Um, yeah, hope you've had a great week so far. And uh, if it happens to be the first time you join us, huge welcome for you. Uh, we're really thrilled you could be here. We uh, yeah, we've been really blessed over the last uh, few months to just have some incredible people sharing with us. And uh, we do have another incredible uh, guy sharing with us this morning. Uh, I'll introduce him in a moment, but what I wanted to do, and I'm just making sure she's online, is Louisa, if you're online, feel free to let me know. I was texting with her a moment ago. Um, I just haven't seen her pop up yet. Ah, there she is. Okay. So I've got a good friend of mine who is actually worked with me a lot in the uh, stewardship space. Uh, and I'm going to introduce her. Sorry, Louisa, I know you've like just joined, but I might get you to jump off uh, mute. Just say hello so you pop up on everyone's screens. Totally. Morning. Sorry, I'm a little bit late this morning. Thank you for having me along in Business Connect. Hey, it's a pleasure. Um, Louisa, you and I have become, it's actually been a pleasure getting to know you over the last couple of years. We've become friends uh, uh, since I came into the role that I've are now serving in our church. But um, do you want to, you're part of our church, you're one of our kingdom builders, you're part of our city campus at Waterloo. Um, and yeah, do you, do you want maybe just for people on here want to explain a little bit about what you do professionally? Yeah, sure. So I've been a part of church since I was um, 23. That was about 2006. Um, and um, what I do for work is I help companies and people in financial trouble. So it's been a really interesting year talking to businesses through last year, what they're doing to survive and thrive if they can. But it's been a lot of survive. And sometimes businesses go through that season and that's okay. Um, so I work in a space called liquidations and bankruptcy. So when I was first offered a job as an employee in this space, um, I nearly didn't take it because I thought it just sounds too depressing, but I needed a job at the time. And as I tried it out, um, I realized it matched exactly what I wanted to do. It's something that's a little bit entrepreneurial because I get to speak with business owners and help them work out um, a strategy for how they're going to fix the problem that they're in. Um, but I also love helping people. And the way I'm made is I love helping people when they're in the most dire parts of their life, whether that's financially or otherwise. Um, because I don't know, there's something in my mind that goes, if you're fine, you're fine. You don't need my help. But for the people who really do, um, that's where I want to be for people. And so it married that so well. And so I actually love what I do. And now I have my own practice in it as well. Yeah, um, it's pretty cool. I, I think uh, your director at Vincent's, which is yes. one of the larger county firms in the country, isn't it? Um, yes, that's right. So when the AFR, uh, Australian Financial Review, measure all the accounting firms, um, they put us at number 28 for last year, 28th largest firm in the country. I do know that there's a couple of firms who don't participate in the benchmark, so it's a top 30-ish, give or take. <laughs> Yes, yeah, um, good. No, it's pretty cool. So you, I mean, you're well-versed. You've been a huge blessing to our church and just helping serve in the stewardship space in general. Um, but for a lot of people on here, a lot of people I know, small small business owners, and why I thought I'd say hi to you and get you to say a couple of words this morning is you've been, I guess, crucial in your input to businesses, especially in the last year. And I guess coming into JobKeeper and things like that, starting to uh, come towards the end. I thought it'd be cool just to hear from your perspective. I mean, you're, first of all, you're a woman of faith and uh, I've mentioned before, you're one of our kingdom builders. In fact, you're one of them, you know, you're one of the most positive faith-filled people uh, that I know. Um, and I don't, I don't just say that lightly, but as well, you're, you know, you are very aware of the realities and what it might take to just prepare for that. And I thought a couple of words of wisdom from you, um, I guess, you could speak from a faith perspective and, or from, a, you know, professionally, your understanding. But how can we, as a lot of us being business owners, how can we prepare for months ahead for maybe this year for possibly some of the shockwaves of COVID? Um, any direct thoughts around that? 
Yeah, sure. So it's interesting. Um, the way I work, we obviously work professionally within laws and uh, uh, requirements and, you know, the strategies that we put through. But really fundamentally, the two for me are married together, the faith and the wisdom and the knowledge and the professional advice, those sorts of things. So I guess the way I see it uh, tends to start with a scripture in most cases. Um, and so for this situation, as I was preparing for this morning, the scripture that comes to mind is out of Proverbs. Um, uh, the horse is prepared for battle, but victory belongs with the Lord. And I have paraphrased that a little bit, um, but that is the proverb. And so our job is to prepare the horse. So what could that look like? Um, so when we advise um, the businesses we speak with professionally, what does preparation for end of job keeper look like for businesses? So that will be different depending on if they're on job keeper or not. Um, uh, and it matters both ways, uh, whichever category they fall into. So if they're still on job keeper, what we're saying to people is you need to have a plan for what happens when that money isn't coming in anymore, because it can be scary. And when things are scary, we don't like going there because we just don't know. And maybe we'll go, okay, we'll work it out as we go. And, you know, in so many things in business, that is fine to work it out as we go. Um, but it's also wise to have a plan. How do we prepare our horse? So um, on a really super practical level, um, that usually means budgeting and cash flow planning. So what are we doing in our business? in terms of looking at the revenues coming in, the costs going out, and what can we do to increase our revenues and decrease our costs? So a lot of business owners have already looked at the cost side, you know, to, to the nth degree sort of thing. We've looked at how we can um, uh, reduce costs, whether that's employees or rent and speaking to our landlords. Most businesses have done these kind of things. But let's also have a look for um, what we can be doing to increase our revenue. Um, what are we... Uh, what are we selling to our current customers? Can we sell more to our current customer base? Are there different customers that we can reach? Um, do we ask customers for referrals to other potential customers? And remember to look at that revenue side. It's not as specific as the cost side usually because you already know what your costs are. But with new revenue sources, you don't always know what your new revenue sources are. So it's a bit of a venture into the unknown. So there's that side. The other side is um, looking at, you know, uh, things around the business more holistically. So um, sh it, should it be sold? Is it a good add-on for someone else's business that will be more profitable if they operate it together? Um, things like uh, if businesses have banking facilities, having a look at those, can we do better with them? Can we get better rates? Can we because sometimes they're secured over business owners' homes. So can we get that released in return for something else? Um, so looking at the banking facilities, um, looking at operational structures. So um, who are the management personnel in, set, in charge of certain areas or certain business units? Um, are they the right people? Do we need different leadership throughout our businesses? Um, uh, operational things, supply chain, how are we going with that? Is it efficient? Should it be improved? Um, how are we going with omni-channel, getting onto the digital space, reaching um, people and potential customers, clients, or whoever it is we need to reach out there. So, so many things we can do in our businesses to prepare for the um, end of JobKeeper. Yeah, well, such great wisdom there. And I think just such great practical advice too. And I, I just love that because, uh, you know, I watch some of your clips, you put clips on LinkedIn and other platforms. I do. And just give it, giving your perspective on things. And I love that. You know, it's great for us to have faith. It's great for us because something you have said once is really specifically write down your plan. Like don't just yes, have a vague right. idea of it, write it down, make it specific. And uh, I love that it is, it's, it's for me, it's very much a stewardship approach. And uh, that scripture you shared is. is so fitting. Could you just say that, your paraphrased version of that scripture one more time? Absolutely. The horse is prepared for battle, but victory belongs to the Lord. And, you know, along with all the planning that we're doing, like, sorry, I didn't touch on the budgeting and cash flow planning too much. And maybe I should have said a, a little bit extra there, which is um, uh, uh, cash flow planning. I encourage people to do weekly. If you want a template for your business, um, uh, uh, what's the best way for people to contact me, Dan? You can pop, uh, pop details on the chat. 
Uh, yeah, okay. Just in, pop, just yeah. pop the details in the chat. Um, contact me through the details on the chat. I can send you a business cash flow plan template. Um, I recommend weekly put in the forecast, um, you know, what do you think you need to uh, pay out next week, what you're receiving next week, and then update it to the actuals, what you've actually received or what you've actually spent and roll it into the next week. And I've got a template for that. Um, and yeah, the, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I just said that's great. I love it. Okay, brilliant. <laughs> awesome. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't at all mean to cut you off, Louisa. But, no, uh, so good. No, very, very much appreciate and, and thank you. I mean, you've got, you know, you're an incredible blessing. I know to a lot of businesses in your, in your space, but also to a lot of people in our church. And uh, you've got an incredible personal testimony too, uh, which you know, maybe sometime we'll get you to share part of that. But um, yeah, I, did you say everything you wanted to say? I know I did almost cut you off, but. Yeah, other than um, our church and our community has also been a, a huge blessing to me. So my pleasure. Right. Thank you, Lord. Um, yeah, thanks for all you do. Appreciate you. Likewise. Appreciate you too, Dan. All right. Well, um, thank Louisa. If you get to, if you maybe chuck a comment in the chat, we'd appreciate you coming on, sharing some of your wisdom and expertise with us. Uh, I'd now like to introduce uh, the person I asked to uh, share for this morning and uh, someone fortunate enough to call a friend. Uh, we served together helping to uh, build the Northern Beaches service at uh, one point in time, which was really great with Jerry and Joe serving under them was an absolute pleasure. Special shout out to those guys. They're some of the best pastors in our church. Um, so yeah, anyway, um, one, of, one of their key, key, uh, I guess, volunteers, Thanks. volunteers in a pastoral capacity and um, yeah it's been part of I think part of that service almost as Great. long as that service has been around is it a business owner locally a guy called Chris Chong so uh, Chongy I don't know if uh, you're able to jump jump off uh, mute there because I quick g'day to everyone oh, I'm here Dan awesome mate can you, can you hear me yeah gotcha welcome pleasure to have you Hi, right, thanks for having me. Absolute pleasure, mate. So you run a business. Quickly tell us, what, what, what uh, business are you in? Three, two. So we, uh, I am partnered in a manufacturing business, a, I guess you could say a brand. Um, so my partner and I, Dave Howe, who some of you would know, um, we run a business or a brand called Misfit Shapes. Um, so we produce surfboards predominantly here in Australia all our glass boards are made uh, right up here just actually in Mona Vale and then we produce, uh, produce soft boards um, in China and then we produce all our apparel uh, out of China and a couple of other um, smaller categories out of kind of South and Southeast Asia well, how long a couple of retail done? stores and mate this is um, actually I actually wrote it down yesterday which um, was a nice um, thing to come to realize but this is my 12th year now that I've been partnered in the business uh, for a few years prior to that I was an advisor to Dave um, who was at that time just a, a sole trader um, but Dave actually started the brand in 2002 so next year it will be 20 years uh, since Misfit begun which is wild because we're only 25 years old um, but um, kidding by the by the way um but we um yeah 20 years next year and so yeah i've been a part of probably nearly 15 of that awesome mate well chris every time i've heard you share you yeah i mean i know jerry has had you preach and you're often helping lead the services down down at uh in northern beaches there i mean you're a gifted communicator a gifted leader and pastor it's, i mean we're so so privileged to have people in our world that uh pioneering in in business and also just at the forefront of leading church and you're definitely someone that always brings to mind when uh when i think of that so mate i'm gonna i'm gonna hand you the floor we're so expectant for what you're gonna yeah. put into us over the next few minutes awesome dan hey do you want to just remind me just so i can be respectful of people's time roughly how what time we need to kind of finish up we're always done by by eight so okay cool no worries well I uh, firstly just want to say thanks, Dan. Thanks for leaving this space. Um, and thanks to everyone for being here. 
Um, it's an immense honor to speak um, or even just be kind of present amongst this audience. I recognize a lot of people in this Zoom and I have a ton of respect um, for you and what you do. Um, but I just want to say that just being here, uh, it says a lot about the kind of person that you are. It's an indicator that you are hungry, that you're teachable, that you're passionate, that you're selfless, that you are kingdom focused. It shows that, uh, that you want to grow and be better. And I think that's something that we all need to have a hunger for. Um, so thanks for prioritizing yourself. Thanks for prioritizing your family, your business, company, organization, whatever you're a part of. Thanks for prioritizing your church and ultimately thanks for prioritizing your faith um, in God. Um, and thanks for being, you know, light in the sphere, uh, whatever sphere it is that you occupy. I understand most people here are probably in business. Um, as Dan and I just discussed, I am in business and I love business. I love being a part of the business that I'm a part of. Um, I We thank God sometimes he could have given us uh, something like white goods to sell, fridges or something. And sorry if anyone does sell fridges, um, but God was so fortunate to give us something that we're passionate about, which is um, surfboards and clothing. Um, I love the products that we make. I love my business partner. I love our staff. I love the industry that we're part of. Um, so I feel very honored um, to be in that. Um, it's a big responsibility. Um, Christ's commission for us as Christians is a really simple one. Um, he said that we're to go and make disciples of every nation to make his name and the person of Jesus famous to every man, woman and child on the earth. And business is how we do it. Our ministry is not separate uh, from our calling in business. Um, and I believe that when we realize that, when we come to realize that, we can be far more effective. So um, when Dan and I were speaking a few days ago around what would be something good to share um, and um, really just something that would be, um, that would help people. Um, I never hop on any of our platforms or share in any kind of meeting um, without the pure intent of just people leaving, being helped. I want people to feel better about themselves, better about um, their faith in God and more confident in what they do. So I, when Dan and I were speaking, he just said, mate, if you just want to share something personal, something that's in season for you guys, um, I don't believe I need to give a, a business 101 seminar to an audience like this. I look around and there's far more experienced uh, business people than I am. But I thought just something that was about where we're at at the moment would be helpful uh, for people. And it's simply around the theme of rhythm. So no clever heading or anything, just a yarn between some friends, seven o'clock in the morning about rhythm. So like I said, 12th year in business, I've been a part of it. Um, we uh, are near our 20th year mark as a brand, um, which naturally speaking means that we've had a lot of growth um, over the, the past two decades, especially in the past probably uh, three to five years. And I'll kind of get into some of the real contributing factors to that. But um, the most significant development um, that if I can highlight probably in that last or since I've been part of the business, probably ever in fact, was the uh, development of the apparel business, which in kind of uh, revenue value is somewhere in the vicinity of about six times the gross revenue of our surfboard business, really in the kind of the first five years of its conception. The, uh, the apparel business is a large partnership deal. So um, I'm going to introduce someone that's um, really important to us um, in a moment, a guy named Pete Lowe, um, who many of you would know. But um, about six, seven years ago, we embarked upon a um, essentially a deal to have a large publicly listed business in the US uh, manage our production mechanics and all our apparel. Um, what that looks like is that they kind of do everything in the middle. In, we do all pre-production, so we do range development, um, art and graphics, um, concepting, we do all range planning. And then they take care of all the, I would call it the ugly stuff in the middle, liaising with China, tech packing, um, managing all the production mechanics. They manage around 55 other brands under their stable of brands um, here in Australia, down in Melbourne and also in LA. And then we come in again at the end of door, post-production, ready to market stuff. So we do all campaigns, marketing, uh, branding comms, collection releases, 
um, everything like that. Currently, we're about a team of five or six that work on the apparel here in Sydney out of our office. Um, production team on the surfboards around the same. Production team on the clothing down in Melbourne, maybe 10, 12 people. Um, we have a retail business, um, a couple of other smaller arms. So we're probably somewhere in the vicinity of around 25 uh, to 30 people that would work on the brand on a, on a weekly basis, not a full time. Um, a lot of contractors in there, but um, anyone that manages even um, a couple of staff and even one business, one being included, um, would know that it's pretty easy to fall out of rhythm. And um, if I can be as transparent as I can with you, um, I really feel like me being like that is going to help people this morning. But we started to, we started to fall out of rhythm. Um, like I said, Pete Lowe has been phenomenal. Oh, he's a phenomenal businessman, um, great business mentor uh, and coach, uh, founder of 100X. Um, but Peter's been an, uh, an advisor to the business for about seven years, uh, more involved in times um, than others. But it was really Pete that probably brought to our attention um, the potential to continue down a path of being out of rhythm. And it's, um, it's not something that Pete brought up seven years ago. Um, these are conversations that are only really probably 12 months old and um, are even as recent as kind of the last couple of months around certain things. Um, so, like I said, after a, a number of years of growing and doing the things the same way as when we were a, a tiny operation, uh, I guess we had lost focus, become distracted. We'd become too busy, too stretched, too exposed. Um, and ultimately, we'd become reactionary. Reactionary in a corporate sense is dangerous territory. Uh, reactive business responds to unanticipated events uh, only after it occurs. Reactionary is constantly on the back foot. Uh, reactionary is always in a defensive position. Reactionary is scared. It's easily intimidated. Reactionary business businesses are inefficient, unproductive, often unprofitable and often fail. Um, I could go through more of the bad fruit of reactionary, and I'm sure a lot of you would be at times familiar with what it can look like, but I'm also an eternal optimist. So uh, I thought instead of continuing on sharing what bad fruit of being reactionary looked like, I, I thought I would give you some of the good fruit of being in rhythm. Um, and I guess you can work out what the opposite of them looks like. But personally speaking, being in good rhythm um, the fruit of it is peace joy fulfillment satisfaction personal growth focus discipline good work life balance even improved health uh, on a professional corporate sense um, again growth profitability healthy culture sustained and satisfied employees a work environment that is rewarding enjoyable one that anyone would want to be a part of rhythm is attractive um, for me, I can be a workaholic. Um, I can, I probably could, uh, if I didn't have a, a family, could work out from, you know, kind of Monday to Sunday, seven days, uh, you know, sun up to sun down. But I can tell you right now that it's not healthy. It's not sustainable. It's not God's will. And ultimately, it probably contributed um, to our organization uh, becoming reactionary over rhythm. Um, I didn't mention before the role that I occupy within our organization, obviously, um, in addition to just being one of the directors is probably a general man manager role. Um, I have come from a sales and marketing background. I worked for a number of other large surf companies before um, stepping into Misfit full time. But uh, when someone at the head of it um, themselves is reactionary and, and a workaholic by nature, uh, it can filter down. You know, there's a saying. The fish rots from the head down and uh, we probably definitely saw that over the last few years. So rhythm, how do we, uh, how do we develop good rhythm? Um, there is a, a ton of corporate strategies and I, I love some of the stuff that Louisa um, started to share on before. It was almost like we had got together before and, and, and spoke about um, what I was going to be speaking about this morning. But there is a ton of corporate uh, processes and strategies out there, and I would encourage you to do some research. Uh, I would encourage you to read. My father-in-law 
who is a pastor of a church in Canada, um, often says that leaders are readers. So I think that if we are at the helm of whatever we're doing, we need to be the ones to prepare to do uh, the hard work and grow ourselves before we can grow an organization. But uh, we definitely apply a combination of good time management uh, practices. We leave measure in our calendar. We've got good modeling systems in place and go through kind of full due diligence and risk assessment um, before undertaking uh, new projects. But a lot of good rhythm um, is simply based around good planning and planning for the unknown, as Louisa said. Um, all bets were off with COVID. Um, when I spoke to a lot of businesses over the last 12 months, they were just like, man, no one could see that coming. Church leaders were, I think most of us probably spent a good month or two kind of just wandering around, um, you know, thinking, what is this about? What is this going to look like? Um, but being planned to respond right, um, because really there is a there is a responding wrong, which is reactionary, but Having planned processes to respond right or well um, is something that every business, uh, church, et cetera, I think should do. Um, practically, as well as spiritually speaking, um, opposition is inevitable. Um, we should expect storms to blow in. Um, even when we wake up in the morning, it's a perfectly sign, a fine and sunny day. We should expect um, those storms um, to come in, the Bible says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the principalities of darkness. The cool thing about that verse, because um, it's not that cool, um, you think the business is hard enough on its own and then you throw in the spiritual element to it. But um, the cool thing about that verse is the verse that precedes that one, Ephesians 6, 11, um, is an instruction to put on the full armor of God so that you can take a stand against the devil's schemes. Um, I've very rarely seen a soldier uh, in a movie or something depicted um, as putting on their armor after the battle has actually begun. Um, it's put on in, you know, on, it's put on in advance um, in anticipation of what is ahead. Um, and it's not lacking in faith to put on the armor like that. It's wisdom. The Bible calls us to actually be prepared um, and to be in that uh, that position. So, there is being prepared and planned, um, which will prevent coming um, reactionary. But kind of this is where I want to get to. And for the, the few minutes that we have left, I really kind of just want to park on this, um, on this theme of good rhythm. Rhythm is ultimately based on having good, strong foundational principles. Um, take, for instance, golf. Pete's going to love this one. Pete and I both started playing golf in the last few months. Um, who would know that there are so many things uh, going on when it comes to swinging a single golf club and hitting one ball? Um, same as business. You can think, oh, we make a T-shirt, we sell a T-shirt. Pretty simple, right? Well, not so much. Um, but a good golf swing um, based on strong learnt principles um, is probably one of the sexiest, most ryth rhythmic things you'll ever see. And uh, you know you're getting close to 40 when you would describe a golf swing as being sexy. But, um, but a good golf swing is a demonstration of strong principles being outworked in perfect motion, which almost certainly result in a good and desired outcome. So rhythm comes from strong foundational principles, but if we can dig even a little deeper, still uh, rhythm comes from first knowing the why behind these principles. Why do we do something? And ultimately basing plans and principles um, from that. So if there's one thing that I would love um, for you to take um, home from kind of today, it would be this, the why. Why do you do what you do? Even if you believe that you stumbled um, into what you're involved in now, um, why is it that you do it? Uh, what gets you out in the what gets you out of bed in the morning? What is your why? What is your personal why? And what is your corporate why? Um, I think over the last six months, um, it really has been Pete that has uh, really encouraged 
out of us um, to answer what misfits, why is, what do we stand for? What are our core values? What essentially is our, or what ultimately is our why? Um, once we can answer the why, then you can begin kind of planning and setting out principles, processes from there. But um, like us, you'll probably realize that a lot of what you do, a lot of the stuff that we do has nothing to do with the actual why of why our, our businesses even exist. I recently heard TD Jakes, the bishop, um, say that COVID for them has been the great revealer, talking about his church, the great revealer. He said that without kind of having physical services um, and meeting, um, it revealed um, how much stuff, how much clutter um, there was um, in what they actually were doing and a lot of their operational stuff that had nothing to do with what the why was of their, uh, of their church. Um, so why? Why are you in it? What keeps you there? Um, Andrew Denton may uh, contest this next point of mine. But um, can I encourage you that the answer to your why, it needs to be more than just financing the kingdom um, and building wealth. Um, yes, Christian businesses are about financing the kingdom. But um, and if you think it's not, then um, if you think it's not about being profitable as a business and what we do, um, then you're probably lying or probably being lied to. But um, money alone, it won't sustain you. Um, foundations are important and the foundation of knowing why it is that you do what you do is absolutely paramount um, to what all of us do in business. Um, I'm not going to have time to kind of pack it, unpack it in a lot of detail and I would encourage you um, if you can, if he's uh, available, that you do kind of sit down with someone like Pete and really kind of help to understand um, and learn the why of your organisation but it's something that you and business partners, if you've got them, can kind of go away and, and sit down and kind of go through. Um, but once you can identify your why, then you can kind of begin to identify your core values. Um, from there, you can kind of then translate them into principles, principles into processes, processes into kind of initiatives. Um, but you've got to be prepared um, as, of we, as of we've learnt. Um, you've, you've got to be prepared to let some stuff um, go. Um, you know, you might think, well, we've done that stuff for a lot of years. Well, that even of itself is probably a reason to kind of not need to do them anymore um, because, um, you know, if, if they don't align with our why, if everything that we're doing doesn't align with our why, then that's how we ultimately can kind of fall out of rhythm. So, Pete, again, will it often encourage us to just focus only on a few things at a time, which is a um, tough thing to do. I feel like at times we're not doing enough, um, but I, you know, I could probably pen out a hundred ideas and initiatives each year uh, that we could focus on as a business, but um, it requires an immense amount of discipline to only focus on those uh, principles that do align with your why. Um, so it might sound simple, um, but revisiting, perhaps first establishing your why will help to develop the right foundations, which will lead to good rhythm and ultimately fulfillment of whatever your dreams are. Um, one last thing, um, and I'd hate for it to um, kind of come across as an afterthought, but all of this really should start from here and it's our personal walk with Christ. Um, if you're in a partnership or a company, um, I would just invite you to let God be at the head of this. Um, we need to devote time to pray together. Pastor Brian said on Sunday morning, we need to pray even for success. And we can be bold in praying for success, but um, we have to be prepared to get away with God. Simple as that. Um, I love a verse in Matthew 28. And we hear it a lot, but I feel it's probably the fitting verse when we're talking about uh, rhythm. Um, it's are you tired, worn out, burn out on religion? Or religion, come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. 
keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. I like that. Freely and lightly kind of sounds like good rhythm to me. Um, so yeah, rhythm, something that we've been going through, something that we're still going through, um, but something that I think is important, especially at this time. Um, like I said, COVID has written a new rule book. And I think for us as leaders, developing good rhythm is absolutely critical to leading the organizations that we lead. So Dan, that's me. Thanks for your time. Love it, Chris. And mate, as someone that knows you personally, I know, uh, yeah, I, I love that. Yes, you're a business guy. Yes, you know, you're, you're quite well known in that space, you know, in the, in the surf industry. But, uh, you know, I've always known you primarily as a man of God, someone that loves Jesus, someone that uh, leads their family so well. So we appreciate you. And uh, for me, that was such a good reminder just to solidify my why and everything I do and simplify that um and I love at the end there we said COVID's what's the effect of COVID said new rule book and uh yeah love it mate it's so true I love what Pastor Brian was sharing on Sunday about yeah you know knock down rebuild like I, I related to that as a builder but you don't knock down an old building to build the same building you knock down knock it down to build a better one and yeah. um, I think it's a better rule book it's you know, we are, we really are in a season where for a lot of us, we're looking to rebuild or go in a different direction or pivot or whatever that might be. So, mate, I think finding our rhythm in that and, and just, mate, I know it was, you know, you said you didn't want it to come across as an afterthought. I, uh, I think it just came across beautifully, like keeping Jesus at the center or like, you know, yeah. that the ultimate silent partner, uh, hopefully not too silent though. Hopefully we're in good conversation with him. Yeah, but, we, um, we, um, I think we've had this conversation before, but you've had a few boards off us, but um, on every surfboard that we make and have done since the very start, um, when Dave kind of writes inscriptions on um, the bottom of the board, which is quite often for anyone that doesn't surf, is quite often the dimensions of the surfboard um, as well as the guy's name. So for DPS, for instance, um, but just above that, we always write along the stringer, all glory to God and um, people have asked us at times, you know, is that, is that how you minister to people? Is that how you evangelize? And, you know, for sure it is. Um, not People don't always love it either. We've had a lot of people in the past um, kind of rebuke us for writing it on their board. But um, I think a lot of it is there to remind us. Um, he's at the forefront of it. All glory and honor to him. We wouldn't do what we did without his um, incredible grace and gifting on our lives and so I think a lot of the time it's just a reminder for us to, to keep him at the forefront and so yeah I didn't want that to be the after afterthought um, you know again I don't need to probably tell this audience about kind of personal devotion but um, in terms of rhythm um, putting God at the forefront of it and getting away with him as says in in that verse um, is absolutely critical for having good rhythm yeah that's cool man and yep I've got all glory to God on the bottom of my board. In fact, in my handwriting, I got I got in the booth with Dave, my last board, you might remember. Did you? Uh, yeah, I, I don't even to, remember that. Yeah, so um, I got to add a little bit of my own touch and uh, even got to put my own name on there. But uh, Dave, Dave gave us that iconic glory to God as well. All glory to God. So pretty cool. Well, mate, uh, I'll get you, if you wouldn't mind, you are on mute. Um, but if you could jump off, just pray for us. I'd love if you could just pray what, uh, pray over this group, everything you've shared. We appreciate you. And uh, thanks so much for taking the time. But if you could pray us out in, into our yeah. day, that'd be amazing. Awesome. Well, Heavenly Father, we, uh, we love you, Lord. And we do want to continue to put you at the forefront of all we do. We want you to have reign and rulership over our lives um, and our businesses and our organizations. But we do feel called, Lord, to be, effective to be light in this sphere of business Lord God so I ask that you would give every single person here favor favor amongst man and you would bless them that you would give them skill uh, well above what they could ever ask or imagine Lord God and uh, we just want to continue to honor you and all we do um, so go before us this week um, create opportunity uh, for us to 
really bring your light and make your name famous amongst all the nations. Lord, we love you. We give you all the glory and honor always. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks again, Chris. And if you could maybe throw some encouragement in the chat for Chris, that'd be appreciated. Uh, mate, Thanks, love mate. Riley and, and the little one and, uh, and Dave, Hal and all the gang as well. So appreciate you, mate. And everyone have a great day. Be blessed.